Hi, this is Mike Sayers from Mechanical Simulation. This is part 5 in our video series on Advanced Driving Assistance Systems, ADAS. In the first four parts you saw how we had moving objects that could represent traffic vehicles, pedestrians, signs, buildings, walls. We could have onboard sensors that would detect these things. In this video we'll look at vehicles that are detecting each other and responding by changing the regular vehicle controls such as steering, braking, and throttle. We're going to look at three options for setting up vehicles that can be detected in ADAS scenarios. This first one is we've already seen where we configure moving objects to represent the vehicle. Here is the data set for the two uh, moving objects. One is the lead unit, the other is the trailer. We have the off tracking set up so that we get realistic tracking of uh, both of them. And we're getting the speed from a table of speed versus distance speed versus station that we obtained to have the vehicle slow down in the middle of the intersection. Now this was easy to set up. It runs fast. The tracking of the target vehicle is fairly uh, fairly reasonable, but it's strictly a passive open loop thing. It's not going to interact with anything else. Car sim, truck sim, and bike sim run under Simulink or other external programs such as fun functional mock-up interface. In this case, there is a car sim S function running in the Simulink environment, and we can have multiple S functions in the same Simulink run. If we set this up, we can click the run in Simulink up here. We're skipping much of this run to save time. To set this up, we have a new screen that was introduced in 20.0 in our products, where we have, in this case, four separate run control data sets that are linked up that will all be communicating with a single Simulink model. We send information by clicking the button here to open the Simulink model, make the run, and then we look at results by clicking a V button, where V is for video. We have four vehicles interacting with sensors, detecting pedestrians. There's a bicyclist up here. We have walls. Uh, and all these are full vehicle models interacting. We'll take a look at how one of these runs is set up. We have our vehicle model up here. We have our link to the Simulink model. It has a set of imports and export variables. For exports, we see that it's just giving the XYZ and yaw pitch roll of the sprung mass that's being made available to Simulink. The other three vehicle models are doing the same thing. When it comes to import, we need to get the XYZ yaw pitch and roll for three more vehicles, which we do here. They don't exist as natural import variables. They're passed through things, so we use the VS command define import to make them. We make six variables for external car one, six for external car two, and six for external car three. When we look at the procedure down here, we have information about the three other vehicles, and what we've done for each one is make a moving object. To locate the object, we use VS commands that assign the XYZ yaw pitch and roll of the object to the variables that were imported from Simulink, which came from one of the other vehicles that was in the co-simulation. On the run control screen for car number one, notice that we're overlaying results from cars two, three, and four. Let's uncheck so that we see the video without those overlays. When we view this video, we see car number one is the blue one. It's all by itself. We don't see the other vehicles, and we don't see the detection beams from the other ones. But we do see things like this detection beam coming here and just stopping. That's for a moving object that exists in this simulation, but which we can't see because the animation is from one of the others that was in the co-simulation. Here we are back with the case of everybody running uh, the videos overlaid so we see all the co-simulations. In order for this to work, all four models, all four uh, run setups, have to have the same ground environment, they have to have the same buildings, they have to have the same walking pedestrian. It's actually pretty easy to do that. We make the full run control data set for vehicle one and then copy it three times for the other three vehicles. We change the vehicle link in each one but pretty much leave the other content the same. To see how long it takes to run we can look at the log file for any one of these and it has the ratio of the clock time over the simulation time. Anything less than one is real time, 
1.27 means it ran slower than real time by 27 percent. However, there are four separate math models here, and if we run on a real time system that has multiple cores, we can still run in real time by having each model run on its own core. Our third option is to use a feature that was introduced in version 2020.1 in CarSim and TruckSim. This is an echo file for the same scenario made with a single math model. Up at the top, this is the code that specifies it. This says independent front, independent rear, space. So this is the second vehicle, this is the third vehicle, this is the fourth vehicle. The single math model has a single echo file with the parameters for all four vehicles. That means it's got data for four sprung masses, four powertrains, four brake systems, and so on. There's also just one output file that has all the output variables needed to animate the results for the four vehicles in the simulation. We don't have a custom GUI uh, screen for setting up multiple vehicles in the model, but it's fairly straightforward. This is the run control screen, and here we have the code that specifies that there are four vehicles, and we have the links here. This is information for the first vehicle. This is uh, setups for the first vehicle, which has controls, plus uh, set up the ground, and it, this will have things like this signs and the pedestrians and so on. This is the information for vehicle two. These are the controls for vehicle two. We don't put the roads and the pedestrians in again. They're already there once. So we're only adding controls that are specific for this vehicle. We do that for all four. We'll take a look at how vehicle one is set up. Uh, it has a regular sedan assembly. We add an ADAS sensor to it. And we add a, a moving object target to the sprung mass of this. This is what makes vehicle 1 detectable by vehicles 2, 3, and 4. Those vehicles also have a moving object uh, target attached to them. One thing that we do differently when we have multiple vehicles is when we set up events, we want to specify which vehicle the, uh, the events apply to. So we make a bunch of parameters and variables in here that are specifically for vehicle 1. We start the events, and there's a new setting on our event uh, library screen, which says which vehicle. We put one, and that means that things like throttle and braking and things that we would normally consider one of a kind apply just to vehicle one. We also put I vehicle down here, which would be one, so that if any of these events are erased, uh, they don't affect events that are pending for the other three vehicles. And then these are the just very basic um, if if then statements that will apply if the variables for vehicle one are triggered. So in this case, there is no simulink. There's only one run set up. To run it, we just click the run button. We can look at the log file like we did before to see what the efficiency was. In this case, it ran uh, almost twice as fast as real time. So it was more than two times faster than when we ran with simulink. Well, this concludes the video. We've seen three ways of putting multiple vehicles in the simulation. One with just smart moving objects, the other two with full dynamic models. One using parallel math models and the other using multiple vehicles in one math model. Thank you for watching.